Hey YouTubers, it's JP Dillon aka Jordan Pierre with another vintage audio fix. This is a Pioneer PL530. It was one of their uh, upper level direct drive full automatics utilizing a low speed electric tone arm. There's a motor that drives a low speed cycling system. And this one has the common problem that most get dealing with the return. So when it starts, it starts wonderfully. You can see it's set down there, it looks great. But when it gets to the end, it has the common failure that it never quite gets back to the armrest. It sure enough gets close, but not close enough. And if it weren't for the fact that it cues the arm up, it would have fallen back down onto the plinth. Now somebody has already tried to fix this by bending and tweaking things that they probably should not have. And I'm going to cycle this one more time to get it into the return position where it stops. And I'm going to show you what the cause is and the do's and don'ts. And really it's all about mechanical binding, linkages, failures, etc. It just doesn't quite get there. Hmm. So, let me get some light on this thing and we'll look underneath. Here is the cycling mechanism underneath. See if it'll focus on something that we can see. Here is your low speed cycling cam attached to the motor. And then this attaches via linkage to this arm plate here, which does a variety of things. This is the cueing side of the arm, which is curved, raised and lower. There is a clutching assembly up here and this giant nut adjusts the amount of friction between the arm and the moving base plate. And then there's stuff up here dealing with the tone arm mount, things that we don't need to worry about. This is the record selector up here, which needs to be free moving, often gets sticky. Uh, this is your manual cueing. So what actually fails with the auto return has to do with this mechanism here, this one right there. And what it is, is it is a uh, flip-flop which presses on a guide pin of the arm. Excuse the jitteriness here, I'm trying to get reoriented so I can show it to you. Okay, so this guide pin that sticks down from the arm base plate here interfaces with the little flip-flop here that moves back and forth. And the purpose of the flip-flop is so that if it, if you try to stop the arm, it just flips out of the way and doesn't break anything. It's actually a pretty ingenious design. The problem is, is this bearing, this bearing here that it's attached to gets shitty. Uh, so that needs to be meticulously cleaned. Also, the rod here needs to be absolutely straight. Absolutely straight. No bends, no tweaks, no nothing. And because if there's a bend at any point, then it creates a bind here, which will stop the mechanical flip-flop from fully returning the arm to the rest. Because this moves slightly as the arm returns. Now, if we go up top, and we cycle the thing again to the point where it fails, I'll show you what moving the sticky mechanical flip-flop actually does. So I'm going to let it pick up and then we'll let it get back to the armrest. Doesn't quite get there. So, let's see if I can angle the camera to a point where you can see it move. If I mess with the mechanical flip-flop underneath, and move it past that sticky point, the arm moves back fully to the rest. 
So what we're going to do is take that all apart, true up the linkages and parts, put it back together, and retest. So I've taken the E-clip off, which allows you to remove the uh, rod. And as we can also see here, that rod is bent, indicating the thing was probably serviced with the bottom off and somebody whacked it on something. That's careless servicing. I'll almost always remove that rod linkage there, this guy, if I'm going to be doing any work on the cycling cam, so that if I have to set the turntable down, it doesn't crunch this and get it bent. So when you take the E-clip off, you're going to find a, a couple of plastic washers. One goes, there's a black one that goes directly underneath the E-clip, and then there's another clear one that goes between the top of the rod and that base plate there. And getting up underneath here, I can get the damn camera to focus. There, well, close. There's another E-clip here that needs to be taken off. And although this is moving, not moving very well. There's something wrong with this bearing that this rides on. Also, I recommend latching your arm in place, which I have not done. So we're gonna take the little flip-flop out and clean and lube the bearing and put it back together. So when you take the second E-clip off, <clears throat> underneath is another plastic washer, followed by this guy, and then underneath this guy, there's a brass washer. Note the orientation of the spring. It's exactly how it's supposed to go. And if we take a look at the part, we see that it's kind of cruddy. It's got some gunk there in the bearing, a little bit of dry grease. And the washer Let's just lay that down there. The washer's definitely got some old grease on it. So we're going to clean all that up. I'm going to take some 2000 grit sandpaper and resurface the uh, washer as well as the back side of this part. This is the flip flop. And then we'll uh, clean the uh, pin there, which it goes on to this guy here. Clean that up really good and make sure it's nice and smooth moving. And then I'll take this uh, rod linkage off and straighten it out so it looks really, so it's really trued up. And then we'll put it back together and see if it works right. All right, so we got this all cleaned up, put it back together. One thing I'll note to you is that one of the plastic uh, washers that I took out from the top side of this was not flat, meaning it had swelled in places and one side of it was thicker than the other slightly and it was causing it to bind. So I replaced that washer with a, another plastic washer that was a, a much better shape. So now when I manipulate the flip-flop, there's almost no binding at all. It just kind of goes back and forth exactly like it's supposed to. So now let's take the, uh, the connecting rod out and examine it and flatten it out so it's trued again as best we can and then we'll put it back together and test. Now when you pull the rod out, the cam side of the rod, which is the L-shaped side, has a plastic washer both on top and bottom. And remember to put that back so that the arm motion is nice and smooth. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, that's pretty badly tweaked. And if we look at it from a lateral standpoint as well, also badly tweaked. So we need to straighten this bastard out. And pretty much the only way I know to do that is either bending it by hand or using a hard flat surface with a mallet and pounding it flat. And we need to get that as true as possible so that it will work with the uh, cycling mechanism correctly. So let's get ourselves a piece of hardwood and a rubber mallet and go to town on it. I might have to get a steel one too, but we'll see. You can really see it when you lay it out on something flat. That's really bad. That would cause all sorts of problems to bind up like that. So the best thing you can do is just flatten it out. Now I'm going to have to put the camera down because I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time and I don't have a tripod. So 
I'm going to grab a mallet, flatten it out, tweak it as best I can, and then we'll take a look at it again. Okay, so with a little persuasion with a mallet and a little bending with pliers, you can see that we've gotten it much better. Almost completely flat. If we pick it up and look at it down the edge. It's also almost flat on both sides. So what we'll do now is I'm going to clean up the surfaces on the top and bottom where things move, reattach it, and then we'll do the final test where we see if it works or not. So we got everything back together here. That nice straight rod linkage is attached to the cam. The flip-flop and everything is in place. So now we're going to make the final test. We're going to see if it works. This is always kind of the fun part. Turn the light off so there's less glare. Let's start her up. Sets down at the right spot. Yep. And let's see if it picks up. Let's see if it returns to the rest. Bingo! So there you have it. Now it's working properly again. So to sum up what I've done here, in case you guys missed anything, the problem at fault was the mechanical flip-flop, which was sticky. So all this got pulled apart, cleaned and lubricated, resurfaced all the metal components with 2,000 grit sandpaper. There was a plastic washer that was on top of this right before the e-clip on top of the flip-flop which had swollen and so the surface of it wasn't completely flat I replaced that with one of an equivalent thickness maybe slightly less also the connecting rod here was bent this has to be absolutely true otherwise it will cause binding which will make this not work now our machine didn't have it but on occasion you'll find a machine that has a foam disc on the flip-flop side up here this little L-shaped crevice that goes bad. It gets soft and gooey and goes away. Uh, the thing that you can use for that is, a, again, another piece of replacement foam. Or, if you don't have that, take apart one of those phenolic trim rings that are on like a speaker, and they're usually layered, and just tack each layer together until you get the right amount of push. But don't bend this. People like to bend this, and uh, that's not a good thing. So. I hope this was useful in getting your 530 working. Assuming this is moving freely when you check it, uh, then very likely the little foam thing is probably rotted and that's why it's not fully returning. It's also very helpful to have this turntable rack. Um, let me back up so you can see it here. The turntable rack is a great thing. You can prop the turntable up, it clamps to the sides. And so you can see the mechanism run in operation and you can better understand why it's broken. And it's pretty easy to make. Uh, this one I actually bought off of a servicer. Uh, but you can make this if you've got machine tools. All it is is uh, 12 gauge steel. And uh, just, you know, cut a, a strip in the middle of it for an adjustment so you can bring these two arms together or apart. And then there's clamps up here with wing nuts that hold on to things. It's really designed for uh, console record changers, but it works in this application too. So I hope this was useful to you guys. Uh, again, this is servicing the auto return on a PL530 Pioneer turntable. Uh, it may apply to other designs, but this, I believe, was intrinsic to Pioneer. So uh, thanks for watching. More videos to come soon.